welcome to The Calling Uncensored, a podcast for awakening souls on the courageous path of becoming. I'm your host, spiritual teacher and messenger, Sarah Rose. I am obsessed with shining a light on the often dark and turbulent process of awakening. You are being summoned. Hello, and I am here today with Elizabeth Payne. She is a money and mind coach and leader in the subconscious transformation. She helps men and women from around the world shift their thoughts and emotions and break through limiting patterns and beliefs to step out of stress, struggle, and overwhelm and into alignment to manifest a life of happiness, abundance, and ease. So I just wanted to bring her on the show because uh, as part of the Awakened Fempreneur series um, to highlight her story and her journey as, um, as an Awakened Fempreneur on the path out there doing wonderful things with her work. And I wanted to bring her on and ask her some questions and let her share her story with you. So without further ado, Elizabeth, thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Perfect. Let me switch screens. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. We're good to go. Um, so it's really interesting. I always am fascinated about, you know, like how you get, how someone like yourself gets started on your journey. And I know you have a very interesting story to share. So yes. why don't you just intuitively go to wherever you feel drawn and, and let our audience know a little bit about your background? Great. I would love to. It started for me, I guess, when I was 30. I was really at rock bottom at that point. From the outside, life looked pretty great. I had a house and a husband and three dogs. I had a corporate engineering career. I was a well-loved, well-respected leader and I had scholastic success. But the reality was actually quite bleak. I, at that point, had been battling physical ailments for over two decades. I had been diagnosed with celiac disease, thyroid disease. I had pretty severe depression, chronic pain, asthma. I was allergic to just about everything. And I had gotten down to 90 pounds at that point on a five foot eight frame. I had trouble walking. There was about probably 10 foods I could eat. My husband and I had traveled the U.S. trying to find the answer. We did non-traditional and traditional things, different herbs, supplements, you name it, we tried it. And by that point, we were over $200,000 in debt, mostly due to all of the travel and medical expenses. In addition to that, our marriage, you could imagine, was a wreck. We mostly lived day to day. It was, hey, let's see if we can survive this day and see if the next day is better. The good news is that we never gave up. That's the cool thing. We never gave up on ourselves or each other. We never gave up on hope. We never lost hope. We always knew that there was more. So we kept going. Whenever doors opened, we ran through them. And when they shut, we ran the other way. It was January of 2014 when everything changed. I was introduced to EFT, which some people call tapping, and I met an EFT practitioner. It was at that moment, Sarah, that I finally, after over 30 years, stepped into my power to create my own life. I stepped into my power to live abundant and free. And I stopped into my power to let go of my past and start to write my own story. Mm -hmm. So in February of that year, I started meeting with the practitioner for an hour every week. And we cleared and cleared and cleared. And eventually, pun intended, everything became clear to me after all those years. I was a super smart, very intuitive child, and I cared deeply. I still do, and I, I always did whenever I was little. But I wanted everyone in my life to be happy, and I absorbed all of their problems very profoundly. And that was at a very young age. So the physical ailments started quite young and continued to pile. 
And as the emotions and the stress piled, everything got worse and worse until that moment. Mm -hmm. So I worked with her for a year and it was quite miraculous. I saw pretty much an immediate turnaround. I mean, for two decades, not a lot had worked and things had just gotten progressively worse. I didn't mention it earlier, but at one point when we were traveling around looking for answers, one doctor actually said that he didn't want to see me any longer, but he would fill out my disability paperwork on my way out, mm -hmm. which was not an option that I was willing to settle for, I guess you could say. So after working with her for a year, we found a lot of stability and I guess you could say the curtains in front of our eyes really started to, to part and we could, for the first time in my life, I was experiencing freedom and joy and you know almost bliss. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people would have stopped at that point, but I've always been one to go all in and really just be fully turned up, right? Just fully live my life. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I'll try the same tools and the same path that I just took from my physical ailments and see if I can make things happen in all other parts of my life. So jumped into that and started studying quantum physics and metaphysics and yoga, lots of meditating and visioning mm -hmm. and kept going with that until I find myself here now, five and a half years later, and I've had a few people say to me that I trans the form, which is kind of a funny way of just saying that I'm living two different lives, you could say. Mm -hmm. So I actually had complete physical healing. So after all of the, the two decades of ailments, complete physical healing, I had trouble walking in the beginning, and now I do yoga four times a week. I actually this year hired a personal trainer. I always wanted to lift weights, but never thought it was in the cards for me. And it's so fun. I'm really enjoying it. I, after 20 years, learned to ride a bike again. And we're doing that every week. And my marriage is healed. It's better than anything I could have imagined. Mm -hmm. I can actually eat anything and everything, which that was really cool to introduce whatever I wanted again after not being able to eat it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Our finances, we used the same tools and process on our money mindset and our finances and completely turned that around to now we're just wildly abundant and, and free, which is amazing. So yeah, five and a half years later, um, complete transformation. Wow, that's an amazing story. So yeah. I have so many little questions for you. So Good. you first started tapping on EFT, like what kind of things did you start tapping on? So initially, I mean, it was, so with EFT, it's really powerful and I still use it to this day. I actually never stopped using it. I mean, it's, it's great for big and small things. Of course, for me at that point, there was a lot of construction piled up. So the practitioner had to take things in layers. Yeah. The layers had just weighed me down. Mm -hmm. So we started with whatever was feeling the worst in that moment. So I let my intuition guide me and we just started working through the layers. The great thing with EFT is that there's something called table legs where you could imagine a table with 40 legs that would be a huge table but let's say it had 40 legs mm -hmm. if you knock down one or two legs it's not going to fall the table will stay but if you knock down 10 it's likely the whole thing will just fall mm -hmm. and eft is that way and that you get started on some of the layers and at first it's like well we keep going but you get enough of them the whole thing will fall yes that's amazing i have had some great success um, myself using EFT at the very beginning when I started out and I with them even like stored emotions but then even like physical pain yes I released I, I released some shoulder pain like instantaneous using EFT yeah so yeah. That, that's really amazing it's a great tool I love that all of these um, tools exist that's like a little toolbox uh -huh. but 
how do, how does that relate to like the inner work though? I've always known it to be like when we were searching outside of ourselves for these tools, like there's still like a level of like inner accountability and inner work that has to accompany this process. Cause I do see uh -huh. some, some people like grasping at certain things as if they have, they're putting their power into something else to heal themselves. And I know for my story is very similar with the gut health and the leaky gut and mm -hmm. the not food allergies and not being able to eat anything and all of those things. And it was like, I was putting a lot of emphasis in other things to heal myself, even though they were more like naturopathic and yep. unconventional. And it wasn't until I really started to do a lot of the emotional healing and mm -hmm. taking full accountability for the inner work that needed to be done. that Those things now supplement, um, yeah. but they couldn't replace like the, right. inner, the inner work. They, they sort of just like help their supplements, right? How mm -hmm. do you, how yeah. do you, feel yeah, totally resonate with that. So that, month in 2014 when i found eft we had completely left the traditional path after you know trying all of those specialists and options for a long time and then we went the non-traditional like you said naturopathic my husband actually bless his heart would measure out powdered herbs like all different ones that i was on so every day i would have these different piles of powdered herbs it was pretty much a full-time job i mean you probably know what i what i mean and with eft it was because meditation and mindfulness is very popular right now and it is great to slow down and get quiet and tune in but with eft it forced me to really take a look like you said at how am I creating this? Mm -hmm. How am I actually creating this crazy, horrible situation that's in front of me and what's truly going on inside? Mm -hmm. Because we, we get so busy living life and trying to fix something that we don't slow down and actually say, okay, what's actually going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So at some point, when did you start to realize that you were, that, that, that everything that you've gone through, tell me now looking back at what you've gone through, like, how do you yeah. feel about everything that you've gone through? Like, what's your take on your, your story? Oh, wow. You know, sometimes I'm so far away from that moment that it feels surreal. Like it feels like I'm living two lives, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. But mm -hmm. I can see I can see along the journey, every step where doors were opening and doors were closing. And I was so guided, just crystal clear guidance, even in those worst, absolute worst moments, just crystal clear guidance, even in those rock bottom moments. Mm -hmm. And to be able to see all along, I knew that I was being guided to something bigger and something more to where I would be able to serve others mm -hmm. and inspire people with my journey. Wow. Yeah. I was getting chills while you were saying that, especially like knowing that you're guided, even in the darkest and deepest, yes. moments, there's like a, yeah. know, a knowingness that's there, like some kind of, I, I don't know how to explain it. I've experienced the same thing. There's like a knowingness. And um, even though sometimes it sucks because shit hits the fan and we're human, but like there's, there's like a knowingness yeah. that there's a higher purpose for it all. Yeah. Yeah. And so I really resonate obviously with you because I feel we both share that wounded healer archetype. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. And part of the wounded healer archetype for those of you who are not familiar, who are listening in on this or watching us live here on video um, or listening on the podcast, the wounded healer archetype is oftentimes there's like an illness or a sickness, or there's something that happens like a, that is not curable by conditional, by traditional means yeah. that the person is, um, goes on a journey to heal them through non-traditional ways and fully by embracing the inner work and the inner healing journey. Yeah. And, and then at some point steps onto the path where I like to say, like the student is ready and the teacher appears uh -huh. and then you're able to bring what used to be your wounding, what used to be your worst nightmare is now a beautiful gift that you get to use to spread healing to others on the planet. Yeah. And come full circle in your hero's journey. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that when you realized that you wanted to take this into for everybody that's listening in that maybe wants to pursue their, you know, passion yeah. 
purpose and turn it in, you know, they're calling basically. That's why I call it the calling uncensored, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. literally like a calling, like you're being summoned forward. There's always been a knowingness, but like stepping onto that path of being of service. Yeah. For me, I always knew that I wanted to help people in some way, but for a long time, it wasn't clear. And for a long time, I was just so busy helping myself that it didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. After finding EFT and starting to gain some stability, to be honest with you, it, there was a few years where it was like just reintroducing myself to you know, who I am and kind of just living life again, right? It was like a rebuilding of so many other things after the, the physical healing. Mm -hmm. In July of 2018, I actually finished yoga teacher training, mm -hmm. and that was a big journey in and of itself, and at that point, I knew, that that was the moment that I knew that it was time. I had mm -hmm. just such a firm foundation, so I felt like before that, it wasn't that I didn't have the stability, but I wanted, I mean, we're always growing, right? Like, you know that. We're always learning. We're always growing. That's mm -hmm. a lifelong process but I wanted to have a foundation where I felt solid, if that makes sense, where it's like, now I'm ready. I'm ready. It's time. I just knew it's like, I woke up that next morning and it, I could just feel it. It was time. Yes. I love that. Yeah. That gives, that gives me chills. Um, so now fast forward, how long have you been? You, that was in July of 2018. Yep. July of 2018. Okay, perfect. So Tell us a little bit about like what exactly you do, what you help clients with now and where people, you know, just a little bit about like your, you know, your process and what you, what you mm -hmm. help people with. Yeah. So most of the clients that I work with now, I work with for three months and we meet weekly and it's a lot of reprogramming. So it's the, I do use EFT with clients. I didn't mention it, but I did my EFT training. So after working with a practitioner, I used EFT regularly myself, but then also thought it would be good to get training just mm -hmm. even though I had so many years of experience, mm -hmm. just to learn a little bit more about the background. So I do get to use that with people, which is so fun. It's fun to use the tool that just changed my life. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of getting quiet with people and having them figure out what does their next level life look like, get honest about where they're at right now. So where are you now? Where do you want to go? And what kind of clearing and reprogramming do you need to do to get there? The biggest thing for me, Sarah, through the process was those first 30 years of my life, I lived someone else's life. I lived everyone else's life. I lived a life that was just, I absorbed beliefs you know, I wasn't making conscious decisions about what I wanted, and I had no idea the power that I had. I had the power the whole time. I just had no idea. Mm -hmm. So when I work with people, it's helping them to get back into their power to live their version of the next level life. Mm -hmm. That reminds me, I'm going to pull it up so I don't butcher the title. I was just listening to this on the stair climber earlier today. Um, by Vision, I don't know how to say his last name, but the founder of Mind Valley, uh -huh. his book, The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. I'm in chapter two about chapter two right now, but chapter one, it, it's all of, he describes it as the culture scape and basically how yeah. we just absorbed everything um, from our from our all of all of the belief systems that we know that we're programmed with, and not even not even necessarily the things that we've been programmed with very young as a child from our own upbringing and those belief systems from yeah. our when we're a child, but just all of the different belief systems and the framework that we've all been bought in, we've all bought into and that we're just, we're following a lot of like what we've been told is right and what we have told we yes. should be doing. And mm -hmm. we sort of lose ourselves and our uniqueness and our, and our path somewhere in that process and starting to question what he calls the culture scape and the way that we've been programmed. Um, yeah is part of the, is part of the process of breaking free. It's part of like the initial process of breaking through that. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's exactly yeah, and life is meant to be fun. I didn't know that for that whole time, right? And now I realize, yeah, you know, we're, we, we hit bumps, we hit roadblocks, we go through things, like you said, but truly, there's so much fun to be had in this, in this life. Yeah. 
I totally agree. And for a while, like I allowed myself to fall into that trap where it was all about work and it was all about getting to the next place and it was uh -huh. all about hustling and it was all about this like misaligned masculine energy, like forcing things. And that's been a huge part of my journey is like coming back into balance and real and coming into the present moment and recognizing that life is supposed to be fun and playful and yeah and what's the point if it's not you know what i mean even stepping onto this path as a what i call you know a messenger or light worker or whatever it is that we're doing mm -hmm. here teacher healer like i feel like that's such a huge part like that calling is such a huge part of like my purpose that gives me deeper yeah. meaning. and i would allow that even to suck me in to where like i was maybe sabotaging relationships or sabotaging other yeah. areas of my life where I wasn't able to thrive and have fun in other areas of my life because I was so sucked into doing just this purpose work kind of thing. So it's really easy to fall into that kind of trap and lose focus on at the end of the day. What's really the most important? What's, what are we here for? Yeah. To enjoy life, right? Yeah. To enjoy life, to have fun, to have freedom, mm -hmm. to experience whatever our soul is really craving. Yeah, to your soul's calling, right? It's calling like your heart's desires, your intuition, those parts, you know, um, that sort of get brushed to the side when we're so worried about like conforming, fitting in and doing the mm -hmm. quote unquote right thing and what we should be doing and all of those yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. And I help a lot of people that are, you could say, I don't know if I like the word, but you know what I mean, overachievers, because that was me. Like I had so much scholastic and corporate success, but it's quite insane because emotionally mm -hmm. it was just a mess. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for your story because this is amazing. And I, I just, um, yeah, I want to make sure we have time for you to describe or give out your URLs and if you have any free trainings sure. or options or anything like that and, and your social media where people can find you. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. So my Instagram is next NXT L V O and then S H I F T. Mm hmm. And a quick funny story, mm -hmm. my husband used to always say that what we were working on was next level shit. <laughs> so then whenever, I know, whenever I was ready to make the name, uh, he came up with, oh, you could say next level shift because when you're doing EFT, you're shifting and moving emotions. Yeah, and we yeah. loved the fact that it was like next level shift. So <laughs> it is true. Yeah. It is next yeah. level. So that's perfect. It is next level, right? <laughs> exactly. So that's the Instagram. And then my website is NXT L V O S H I F T dot mm -hmm. X Y Z. Okay, perfect. And I yep. will be putting these in the show notes as well. Where okay. do you have people? Do you have um that was your Facebook the last one you said, or was that that your was one? uh my website. Okay. And DM is really great on Instagram, but also email. Okay. And my email is just elizabeth at nxtlvlshift dot xyz. Okay, perfect. I will go ahead and put all of those details in the show notes so all people right. can find you. And if you if they are feeling called to maybe inquire about your services, they can do that. Do you have any special programs or promotions or anything going on right now you want to mention? I do have a worksheet with some of these steps mm -hmm. that they could uh when they email me i could send it to them okay perfect yeah and it's a four part it's a four part worksheet that helps them do yeah. what it helps with tuning in to where you're at now envisioning where you want to go mm -hmm. identifying what's in the way and then rewiring the brain perfect all right you yeah. guys you heard it. thank you so much for tuning in with me today and sharing your story your amazing transformation and all the beautiful work that you're doing in the world today Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. If you got value from this episode, please subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And I'd love it if you leave me a review on iTunes. For more info beyond this podcast, or if you have a question you'd like answered in an upcoming episode, please visit thecallinguncensored.com. And for daily inspiration or to shoot me a DM, come hang with me on Instagram at spiritual CEO. Namaste.